Welcome to the Abilene Fire Department's Physical Agility Test. Task Simulation Event. This is a timed event and you will have 8 minutes and 30 seconds to complete the test. You will begin at the designated area located at the base of the drill tower. AFD personnel will assist you in donning a 40 pound weighted vest which you will wear during this entire test. The clock will start once you enter the doorway of the drill tower. One. Proceed directly to the area where the high-rise hose pack and sledgehammer are staged. Pick up the high-rise hose pack and sledgehammer and proceed to the sixth floor landing, where you are required to touch the red sixth floor sign on the wall. You will then proceed back down the stairs to the fourth floor landing. Once you have reached the fourth floor landing, you will carefully place the high-rise hose pack and sledgehammer on the floor and proceed into the room. Tips for this event. Maintain a consistent rhythm while ascending the stairs. Carry the high-rise hose pack on your shoulder and grasp the sledgehammer handle near the head. Note, you must touch each step while ascending and descending the stairs. You will receive one warning to discontinue skipping steps. A second violation will result in a test failure. While on the stairs, you are required to keep one hand on the railing at all times. Running is not permitted. Two, once inside the room, you will sit in the marked area on the floor with your feet against the wall and grasp the rope with both hands. You will then begin pulling the rope with a hand over hand method and lift the two and a half inch hose roll until the ending mark on the rope is visible in the window and your test proctor states you are complete. Then you will begin lowering the rope back down, still using a hand over hand method. Once the hose roll touches the ground and the beginning mark is visible, you will go back to the landing and pick up the high-rise pack and sledgehammer. Then proceed to the third floor. Once you have reached the third floor landing, you will carefully place the high-rise pack and sledgehammer on the floor and proceed into the room. Tips for this event. Maintain a tight grip on the rope. Use your upper body to pull the rope, not your back. Sit with your knees slightly bent. Note, if you lose control of the rope, you must lower the hose roll to the ground and start the event over. You shall not allow the rope to slide through your hands while lowering the hose roll. Three, once inside the third floor room, you will then proceed to the Kaiser sled event. Pick up the provided sledgehammer and position yourself over the sled. Then strike the sled until it slides the full length of the platform, which is about six feet. The proctor will advise you to stop striking when you have completed this event. At that point, you will carefully place the sledgehammer on the ground, return to the third floor landing, pick up the high-rise pack and sledgehammer, then proceed down the stairs and return the high-rise pack and sledgehammer to the first floor room where you initially picked up these items. Tips for this event. Try to keep the front of the sled even with your heels or the middle of your feet. This will allow your sledgehammer to strike the sled at the best possible angle. Also, most people have found that short, quick swings move the sled faster and cause less fatigue as compared to longer swings. Maintain good posture and technique throughout the event. 4. Exit the drill tower and proceed to the designated area near the hose drag event. There will be white tape about 6 feet from the coupling indicating the area you may use to handle the hose. Shoulder the hose on either shoulder and begin walking the direction your proctor instructs you to go. There will be orange cones and a red line marking the finish line. When instructed to stop, gently place the coupling on the ground and proceed back to the hose drag start point. Tips for this event. Stay low to the ground as you walk. Standing straight up will not allow you to use the full strength of your legs. Be sure to secure the coupling as you shoulder the hose. If you do not, it will swing and hit your knees as you walk. Note, shouldering multiple layers of the hose is not permitted. Running is not permitted as well. 5. From the hose drag start point, proceed to the designated area to perform the farmer's carry. Lift each 40-pound dumbbell off of the table, grasping one dumbbell in each hand. Walk towards the designated cone, then around the cone and back towards the farmer's carry start point. Once past the start-finish line, place both dumbbells carefully back on the table. Tips for this event. Get a good grip on the dumbbells prior to walking. Take quick, short steps to maintain a good balance and keep the weights close to the midline of your body. Walk with a straight back and posture. This is a good time to control your breathing and catch your breath. Note, if you drop a dumbbell, you must stop and place the other dumbbell on the ground and pick up both dumbbells at the same time. Running is not permitted. Six, 
Proceed to the designated area to perform the ladder lift and carry event. Lift the 12 foot roof ladder off of the hooks and shoulder carry the ladder around the serpentine course. The proctor will direct you on the path of travel. After completing the serpentine course, you will place the ladder back on the hooks. Tips for this event. Carry the ladder in the middle to minimize swaying and dipping. Maintain control of the ladder at all times. Do not allow tips of the ladder to touch or allow the ladder to fall to the ground. Note, if any portion of the ladder touches the ground, you must stop and regain control of the ladder before proceeding. 7. Proceed to the designated area to perform the ladder race. Grasp the halyard with both hands and begin pulling the rope using a hand-over-hand -hand method. You will raise the ladder until the two colored rungs meet. Your proctor will instruct you when to stop. You will then lower the ladder using the same hand-over-hand -hand method until the ladder is returned to the bottom. Tips for the event. Use and maintain a strong grip on the halyard. Maintain control of the rope and ladder at all times. Pull with your legs slightly bent and do not bend at the waist. Note. If you lose control of the halyard, you must lower the ladder to the ground and start the event over. You shall not allow the halyard to slide through your hands while lowering the ladder. 8. Proceed to the designated area to perform the 145-pound dummy drag. Pass through the two cones and proceed to where the 145-pound dummy is located. Pick up the dummy and drag it 50 feet to the finish line. The entire dummy must cross over the marked line. Tips for this event. Lift with your legs and not your back or waist. Use short, quick steps to help maintain balance and power through with your legs. There are many acceptable methods to move the dummy. However, grasping the dummy under the arms has been found to be an effective method. You are not required to completely lift the dummy off the ground. Note, if you drop the dummy, you must completely lower the dummy to the ground and pick up the dummy again. You may not drag the dummy by head or by grasping any clothing. The dummy must be dragged head first. Your time will stop when the dummy completely crosses the line. Proceed back to the table with your proctor and remove the vest. Important, if at any time you feel dizzy, nauseous, or experience shortness of breath, immediately stop and notify your proctor. Test failure actions. Not completing any portion of the course in the manner prescribed in these instructions. Not completing the entire course in 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Not touching each step while you are ascending and descending the stairs. You will receive one warning to discontinue skipping steps. A second violation will result in a test failure. Not completing all portions of this course in order.